Here's how we do a stress test. Basically, we take 220 and minus the patient's age, and that gives their maximum heart rate of 158. So for his heart rate right now currently is 84. We're currently at 52% towards his 100% goal of 158 heart rate. So we are looking for their rhythm changes, if there's any that occur during the test. And every three minutes, the exercise treadmill will actually increase in speed and elevation just gradually until we get, can get his heart rate up appropriately. So Tom, there's where you are now. Heart rate of 90. We're trying to reach 158. You've almost been involved in your walking for about a minute. At the three minute marker, it will elevate just a little higher and go a little faster. When you feel your blood pressure cuff go off, that means you have one more minute left at the speed that you're at. Dana, what's the objective here? What do we? What are we trying to do? What? What is going to happen during this uh, procedure? So hopefully, our patient is not going to have any discomfort whatsoever. He's not going to have any chest pain, and we can get his heart rate up without any elevation changes in his rhythm. Once he once he walks to we get his heart rate where we kind of want it, then Nancy will take over at that time. I'll inject it through the IV of a radioactive tracer called Cystamibi, and um, that's used to image his perfusion of his heart. And 30 seconds, so it can get a little faster and the elevation will get a little higher. Good job. Okay, you're getting closer. Right now you're at 76 or 77 percent towards your maximum. Current heart rate is 122. You're four minutes into it. Radioactive tracer. It's not harmful to you, and it doesn't make you feel the butt of your beard. One more minute left walking, and you're done. Allow us to take pictures. Let me give you some saline. This flush is tubing out. Nancy, you say you're looking for at the blood flow in the heart. What kind of uh, abnormalities might you see if somebody has a problem? We can see blockages, any kind of um, muscular defects, um, history of patients that, that, that have previously had um, cardiac events. Um, if you, I've got a picture up here if you're interested to show, um, for example, this is the stress images and this row is the rest images. And what we do is we compare the two to make sure that they look equal and even. And um, if, you, if a patient had a dark area on the stress images, that would be indicative of a, um, of a defect. And that patient, um, if they had no history, the physician would consider probably doing a heart catheterization to see if there's a blockage and something that they could correct through uh, catheterization possibly putting in a stent or to see if they would need further extensive. So a lot of times this yeah. is this is how you know you need a heart cath is from this test here. Correct. This is the baseline, yep. This is the gold standard, you know, where you start off. If there's anything abnormal with this test then you would go to the cath lab. And it only takes fifteen minutes once you've had your stress to to go through the scanner, right? It takes fifteen minutes approximately, just like that. And then um, what I'll do is I'll re-inject this um, patient with the same imaging tracer system, maybe, or sometimes you can hear, uh, you might hear it called Cardiolite, and they'll wait an hour. At that time, they can go eat, they can take their morning medications, and then I'll bring um, the patient back, lay her back on the bed, do this exactly the same, and then we'll compare this two. That'll be her rest study, 
The first part is her stress study. And then we take those two images and, like I said, we compare those to make sure that everything is equal and matched. See, and are those little images of hearts there? Is that what that is? Yes. They're just cut in different slices. I see. I see. Different. Okay. Wow. 